welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, really nice to meet you. My name is Elle and I'm a third year student of Hotel School Le Hague here in Amsterdam. And I'm also a part-time supervisor at Hilton Schiphol Airport for the front office team. And for those of you who have been to my channel before, I know the setup is a little bit different. There has been a lot of life changes for the past two months. So this is my new home for the moment being. Today's video, as you see in the title, is very much different, but I did get some requests to share my lifelong journey of uh, losing weight. People wanted to know about my diet and my gym workouts and how did I get here. I'm not a professional and I did not ever consult with any kind of dietitian. This was all my self-practice and if some of my tips would stimulate you to, you know, start your weight loss journey, I would be happy. But this is purely informative video about how I dealt with my weight loss and this is not a recommendation, so I hope you guys get it. So let's dive right into it. Let's start from the beginning. My mom and dad both gain weight easily. Like as a child I was a little bit chubby like when I was even born. Let, let, let's start there. <laughs> from the first day I was already a pretty heavy child and then both of my parents struggled with weight loss throughout their lives as well. So let's leave it out there despite my younger brother being really good with perfect metabolism and all of those stuff. I did not get those genes at all. <laughs> yeah for those of you who don't know I grew up uh, in Russia. In our culture we have a lot of starchy foods as our main cuisine of the country so we use a lot of potatoes and uh, pasta and some pies and pastries all of that it was a very normal thing to eat i was living with my mom for the most time and you know when you raise two kids at the same time it wasn't her priority to learn how to cook you know amazing nutritious dishes so my lunch would usually be pasta with some kind of cheese and ketchup and maybe some meatballs and then some sandwiches for breakfast but it was very simple simple food which was not really high in nutrition whatsoever also when when i was growing up i think what really got me out of the direction later in life that i realized now was that i was constantly forced to finish a plate or to eat something i really didn't like like i have those bright bright memories of like eating a spoon of the porridge for mom eating a spoon of porridge for dad that kind of relationship that i have to eat when i'm offered food was stuck with me for a really long time then i was growing up puberty hit me and i think i was as a growing body i was losing weight naturally then we got to middle school and there i got chubby again you know when uh, eating pizzas in the cafeteria for lunch and having this constant routine of having very starchy very carby foods for three meals a day and i would say that my portions were pretty big back then even though right now i don't really recall but that was the period also when it was very popular to get into dieting as the middle school girls of course everybody are sharing the tips and tricks there are all of those uh, public groups on the russian facebook that we had back then that were also stimulating try this and starving this and it was very unhealthy diet tips that i've tried them all you know me and my best friend were obsessed with losing weight and you know 300 grams we would fight over each other of who lost more and you know it's funny to think about it that right now but back then that was a part of the culture where we were growing up and seeing those diets where they tell you one piece of chocolate and an egg for breakfast like there was no evidence behind those dietary requirements but i've been trying it all and i couldn't stick to any of it because it was just pure restrictions weird combinations long time no eating and it all ended up just not being effective in the long term i'll show you a picture of me in the middle school it was really much a chubby girl and i was also really much ashamed of my body weight because when you're constantly trying to look like somebody else then you kind of build that mindset of yeah i am my body is too big you would look at this picture and think this was fine but i was looking in the mirror and seeing the cheeks and uh, the belly fat that was always a problem i think for all the girls still in this world and also in school you know the guys would constantly find ways to you know call you yeah bad words i'm not gonna go into it but uh, the guys in my class were not nice i'm happy i later when i actually got my self-esteem together got an apology from those guys because i was telling them this is not how you treat girls and hope them to have a healthy self-image later on and i later confronted those guys but that was towards like grade eight but during that time in school yeah it 
was uh, rough, you know, seeing myself and not being happy like ever. <laughs> uh, but also not knowing what I'm doing wrong because I'm trying all of those things and it just doesn't work out. But it was never consistent, you know, it wasn't like I was doing a diet for a longer period of time because obviously diet, it has a beginning and an end. And so we get to that eighth grade and uh, my mom remarried and we are moving to Sweden. And I moved to the country without knowing the language and there was a lot of new stuff. The key point is I lost weight. Like for the first year, I think that, yeah, the environment changed and uh, getting to know new people and being like starting with a completely fresh page was uh, very stressful to me and I continued on leaving those kind of dietary rules at least some of them for instance at the eighth grade I know for sure I wasn't eating after 6 p.m just because I wasn't hungry after all and that was like kind of my small fasting towards the next morning food and I was also still growing you know in the eighth grade what, what, what was I 15. And so I was still growing and you know it was pretty easy for me to lose weight back then and I think the lowest at that point was 56 kilograms And then my trips to Korea started, I went first time in 2015 And there once again as I was growing up and I continued eating you know the very fast food, the ramen I was drinking alcohol even though I wasn't 18 yet, sorry mom But a uh, combination of bad foods and not thinking about nutrition at all and thinking I need to lose weight but, You know blaming on the top of your head but not doing anything about it amazing and healthy lifestyle for this but I was also saving a lot of money so I was eating a little but shitty food and uh, I don't recommend uh, wasn't good for my belly fat and then 2019 kicked uh, covid hit and at that point I was I think at the heaviest point of my life like I was hitting 76 77 kilograms and just to give you an estimate I'm 170 centimeters I was really into like this is not okay and I need to do something about it but I was also what am I I was 20 I knew already a lot about the dieting culture but never thought of it being more, something more holistic me you know I want to be skinny for life thanks God 20 year old me really realized that she needs some more academic evidence about it so so it wasn't necessarily only about you know, the healthy lifestyle kind of thing but more what is our food doing what is psychology doing with us and our eating what are eating disorders how the sleep affect how we're eating what does exercise do for us but i was really into those topics and suddenly found myself really much into you know well-being and stuff like that and so i figured why don't i try more selective way of eating but my first adjustment ever was to listen to my body I figured that I'm forcing myself to eat so many times and put a portion that I cannot finish even though before that I was trying to limit my portions a little bit but that was kind of you know this is my plate and that's what I'm gonna eat but now I switched my mindset to thinking hey I ate and I wait a little bit and I see okay am I full or do I want anything more and then I go take it but for me there was a big mind shift of telling myself that it's not healthy to finish a plate that I don't want anymore and kind of connecting my body and my brain a little bit that led me into okay I know what nutrition components are and I knew that I wanted to try to change something in that so I was researching it so okay what are carbs I, so many people say that you know there is this keto diet and so I looked into that read a couple of books about keto figured out hmm it seems like something I could try out but I also knew that cutting it off wasn't what I wanted so I just I started to piece by piece eliminating some heavy carbs from my diet and you know just the first two three months without pasta and white bread was mind-blowingly changing because I was listening to my body and not eating pasta but finding new ways to fill myself with other things like trying out different vegetables like for instance I can tell you right away I hate crunchy vegetables like to eat a salad for me back then was just not a thing but cooked vegetables, steamed vegetables, satay, something like that was a perfect solution for reducing the carbs and I remember I cut pasta but I was still eating rice a lot so that was helping but after a couple of months rice went out so I cut most of the carbs from my diet even though I was eating beans and stuff like that you know I was eating meat, fish, eggs and a lot of cooked vegetables <laughs> And then some yogurt on top of that. It was really nice, you know, I was eating granola still and stuff like that. And I was feeling so much lighter, like listening to my body and thinking, hey, like it doesn't have to be heavy in my stomach after food. It doesn't feel tiresome. Like I felt energized from every meal, which was a revolution in my world. I didn't feel like I was forcing this adjustment. It just happens. And I really enjoyed myself <laughs> back then. So at some point I also saw, okay, sugar is equivalent carbs because that's just how it is. 
this so i also cut a lot of sugar from my diet <clears throat> back then i was also eating fruits i never was a big fan and just at some point i just stopped eating fruits that energy that i suddenly gained i put into gym i was like i have so much energy i need to put it somewhere even though i was already having like three dancing sessions with my uh, dancing group i also <clears throat> bought a subscription to the gym and before that trust me i, I made my attempts to get to the gym but if you would have told me back then that i would be that girl to go to the gym so many times as i do right now made it to the gym and i just came there uh, and if before i was just you know making my attempts to do some cardio trainings i would just go to the gym to run on a treadmill until i'm really tired at thir 13 minutes didn't enjoy it at all and went back home at some point i actually even tried to watch series while i'm running which helped a little bit to be consistent but then i quit as well and then i was like okay let me try some machines you know i have no clue how machines work it was like scary environment but i was like okay let myself be i will read the instructions on every machine and i will try it here and there so i made for myself a promise that okay three times a week sounds reasonable so i went there and i just tried out things you know push myself figured out that somewhere between like 10 reps was good for me i was watching a lot of youtube videos in terms of okay what exercises can i try what is good for beginners i explored most of the machines in the gym even though like throughout the next year it was taking me time to get to some machines that were really advanced for instance the barbell i didn't touch it for the first three months it was too scary like i was like what if i drop it <laughs> i don't even know how heavy it is i was doing like full body workouts okay so it was nothing special i was just doing whatever the video was telling me to do or tried out something on my own just because i was curious i got this really nice tip back then from hannah erbe the, the swedish influencer that she said try be in your comfortable clothes so allow yourself to wear something that doesn't reveal your body if you're not comfortable with it yet and just work out for yourself you know make your own space and don't mind people because everybody are there for the same reasons you just go and do your thing with those small steps i was going to the gym and i was doing low carb diet like almost keto the only thing that was stepping me out from keto was the alcohol over the year i built my workout to be more split out in body parts so those three workouts throughout the week became legs back and chest and then i figured that it was too little for me for the amount of exercises i wanted to do so i extended it to four workouts per week for that period like for the first even half a year i didn't even weight myself like that wasn't my goal i was just trying to get connected with my body how i was feeling and with my head and my heart so when all of those got connected i finally allowed myself to weight myself and you know everybody kept telling me i like i look like i lost a lot of weight but i'll just show you what it looked like so i dropped from 77 at my maximum to this and i was 63 kilograms so when i calculated that for half a year i almost lost like 12 kilograms i was like who knew that it was be it would be this smooth like trying to diet so many times and now boom I'm, I'm eating i'm constantly full i'm fulfilled i'm doing exercising and i was feeling so good like and uh, that was me until i moved to the netherlands where i am right now that was 2021 in february and we needed to do the quarantine there a hotel where we were put with all the other students for 10 days and basically i was in my keto vision getting served food as everybody else but it was just room service and its purest form of white bread gems and even yogurt was sweetened so i was not eating enough during that week people from other rooms were sending me food that i could eat because i was arguing with the room service but they just kept forgetting because they needed to feed so many people in their room so they just forgot about my dietary requirements and i was literally living off coffee in that those four walls of the room and then uh, when we moved to scutel a couple of months later suddenly my period disappeared to the level like it was just nothing was happening my body i was just living my life and then for the next it was almost a half a year i live without period which is girls over there it's not worth it and it's so much stress and so much anxiety in your brain and your body is feeling so incomplete when the natural things that are supposed to be happening in your body are not happening anymore and i was so shook because i didn't realize how much weight i lost but you know looking back i'm 100 percent sure that my quick weight loss was the reason for losing it and getting it back was also i once again needed to get back to literature and see what could be a possible reason for a change like that and uh, on some video and youtube out uh, people were recommending to take the vitex vitamins which i did there was a point where i figured out that yeah i might be missing some nutrition that's why it's not happening so i started to vary my diet more so. but i also figured i need some carbs to gain some healthy muscles because 
I'm, I keep going to the gym, but my muscles are getting toned up, but they are not growing. And I figured for me, now my woman's health is gone. So I need to focus on gaining the healthy weight and get my period back. And for that, I need to make sure that I eat all the possible elements that my body needs also to be able to see more progress in the gym. So I made a strategic decision for myself. I added oats and I added low carb bread. So, and for the next half a year while I was eating the vitamins, the Vitex and the some additional carbs my period came back i still remember the day when it happened i think i texted all of my friends being like "Ooh, it's finally back uh, at that point i just found myself a scale and i was 68 kilograms and you know i was just fine yes i got a little bit more chase but i was i was happy you know i knew i was healthy i was living a super healthy lifestyle at that time in the netherlands i was still going to the gym four times a week and now in 2023 i'm 24 years old and i'm still on a low carb diet actually not much changed but i'm not really afraid to eat a little bit of carbs i i'm in that state of mind that i know exactly which food contains what and i'm really aware of what i'm eating but i'm not restricting myself i fucking hate it because i know what, what kind of consequences this leads to i still don't eat after 6 30. i want i like to go to bed without having my stomach processing food and i know that it needs the time to just sleep and clean my body that's why i wake up always hungry so for me the breakfast is the most important part i really like my greek yogurt with some peanut butter blueberries and uh, granola that's one if i want to have an oatmeal i would just make an oatmeal but i only try to eat that when i do a leg day on my weekly schedule but yeah breakfast is important because otherwise i'm really grumpy and hungry for the rest of the day i'm also the type who really don't like drinking and eating so i would first have breakfast and have my coffee at like 10 30 black coffee with some oat milk or yeah i don't drink milk I don't know, at some point I just quit and I just can't go back to the cow smell of the milk I'm not sure if I, it ever affected my diet, maybe yes, maybe no I'm not lactose intolerant, but probably I am now, so and Then lunch and dinner, I would just eat soup and a salad Or grilled vegetables with some meat or fish or whatever It's very different, sometimes I do buy low-carb wraps and just make wraps in that Or even toasties, you know, with something sometimes on my plate as well I do take vitamins now, especially the, now I did a blood checkup in russia when i was there three months ago and they told me i have a deficiency of vitamin d and obviously i live in the netherlands so i could have figured that one out but i figured i needed to take much higher dosage so that's something i'm doing now i do vitamin d in the morning i take vitamin b omega and iron because i'm donating blood and so iron levels were just sufficient but i want to make sure that i keep them on a good level so i can keep donating throughout my life and then what comes to the workouts i will show you my weekly routine i really like starting with the heaviest day of the workout so leg day and then my favorite day is the back uh, what comes to the workouts by the way even though i don't do much cardio i figured that my 68 weight was like that since 2022 i maintained at 68 for a really long time and now in the beginning of the summer a person recommended me to shorten down the breaks in between the reps and i usually do like three sets of 12 reps that's just my maths i'm just really comfortable you know doing the 10 and two extra push kind of thing and i added cardio so i'm doing like four exercises and then i would go running and then i would continue with for other exercises running and i do abs in the end of my workout so i do have higher pulse now when i'm at the gym 137 is uh, usually where i'm laying my body is really comfortable living on energy from fat and protein rather than from carbs but it doesn't mean i don't eat carbs it's just a lower percentage of my daily routine basically and uh, now we are in october 2023 and yeah all of those life changes were caused by a really bad breakup i would say and i don't know how I ended up here but here we are this is the first time this is really happening to me so i've lost a lot of weight you can see it on my uh, face i'm right now 63.3 kilograms even though i was eating normally but just there's so much stress and emotions going on inside of me i'm still going to the gym i really enjoy it but i need to find a way to gain some more weight because even though this was my dream weight at some point of time i feel myself being too skinny and i really don't like it so the plan is to get it up to maybe 65 and i think i'll be really happy thank you very much guys for checking out this video i really appreciate you taking the time if you have any questions about what i shared in this video please drop them down below or text me in dm on my instagram and it was really nice to see you here